this week on days of our Steelers. The Steelers have a must-win game in Heinz Field against the Denver Broncos, a team that is 3-1, except all three of their wins are against inferior opponents. And Ben Roethlisberger actually makes a good pass. Wow, this game's off to a good start. Claypool for the first down. But the Steelers, this is a must-win game for them, basically. If they go down to 1-4 and four, if the schedule that they have, I just don't see them going anything above 9-8. and eight. And even so, 9-8 and eight might not be enough to get an AFC playoff picture and into the playoffs as that's a touchdown for Deontay Johnson. And he starts off the game just like he did last week. Oh, my God. All right. It could change this week, but I can't get too excited. I can't get too excited. This is what I did last week. I can't get too excited. They're trying to fool us. Well, guess what? You're not fooling me, Pittsburgh. It's a third down and nine. They get the stop, and the defense is energized. Minka is clapping almost as much as the Penn State Nittany Lions did with Robertson in the second half of last week's game. But we're not going to talk about that, as that is a dart by Ben Roethlisberger to... Pat Fryer Muth, everyone in the crowd was yelling Muth today, just like they used to yell Heath for Heath Miller, which is very cool in my opinion. Najee Harris, oh my god, he actually has decent blocking, and he gets a gain of about six or seven yards right here. Gain of seven, third down and three. Rob Springer takes a snap, he's going to drop back, and he's going to throw it to Eric Ebron, and that's going to be caught. He did not drop it. Oh my god, it's like the second coming of Christ. That's how rare it is, except it's got to happen every now and then. It's going to happen once. As it's going to be a first down to Najee Harris. And is it just me or the, is the offensive line actually performing pretty decently today? Let's hope I didn't speak too soon. And it looks like I really did it. That was honestly Ben's fault. It's picked up by Andrew Johnson. And that's going to be a fumble and recovered by the Broncos. They're going to get the ball at about the 35-yard line. As that is Johnson, the middle linebacker for Denver, making looking to make his presence known. And Watt, he absolutely clobbers. He clobbers him, and he has absolutely nowhere to go as that is going to result in a third down and 12. Bridgewater steps back. He drops back. He just has to throw it, and that one is not going to reach the line of gain, and that's going to result in a fourth down. Broncos kick the field goal by Brandon McManus. It's up and good, and that's going to be a 73 lead for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And right here, Najee's going to give a fake handoff, and it opens up a play-action game to Zach Gentry, finally getting some more tight end play involved in the offense. I like the play calling so far today. Very improved. That's a first down for Pittsburgh. And Roethlisberger, 19 seconds left in the first quarter. He dumps it off to Najee, who doesn't really stiff-arm him, except he kind of breaks a tackle to go out of bounds in the process of doing so. Hand off to Najee. Najee Harris bursts to speed. That's a first down and more for Najee Harris. Going up inside to about the 26-yard line. That's going to be a first down for Pittsburgh. Najee Harris is on pace to have himself his first 100-yard rushing day of his NFL career. Something very exciting because he had a 100-yard receiving day against the Bengals, but that is not good news. I mean, utilizing Najee Harris is good, but the way he got the ball and in the fashion that we did it and why it was happening, that was really bad. As Boswell kicks up, and it is good. It's going to make it a 10-3 game for Pittsburgh. Third down and three here for Denver. Defense trying to get off the field, and that one is incomplete. It was intended to Cortland Sutton. I don't really know what happened there. It looked like it was batted down at some point. It was changed direction or something. As that is going to result in a... Oh my goodness! Claypool almost had that. Except it's going to be incomplete. And that's something that Claypool... Like, he should be getting more of the 50-50 balls that they're throwing to him. But at the same time, that's, that's like Joe Flacco on the Ravens style offense right there. Throwing the ball deep and hoping for a pass interference. And we, don't, we didn't do that nearly as much this game, but we need to stop doing that. Javante Williams with the carry. Williams breaks free. And Williams might be going all the way. But no, James Pierre is going to tackle him about the two-yard line. James Pierre tracks him down. He spikes the football. And for some reason, what is happening? What? Delay of game on the offense? Are you Are you kidding me? That's dumb. That's terrible. I'm sorry. He, he's a rookie, and he just had like a 45-plus yard rush. Of course, he's going to celebrate. The play clock didn't even hit zero. That's stupid. As he is clobbered, and that set the Broncos back to the seven-yard line here. But on second down and goal, the Steelers get the sack. That's Devin Bush on the play. And that is going to result in a field goal for the Broncos rather than a touchdown. And it is 10-6. to 6. Now, the Broncos get robbed there potentially, but we have a great defense, so they could, they still could have knocked on in. As this pass is caught by Claypool. And Claypool, he's swerving around people. He's still staying in bounds. Chase Claypool, a gain of 58 or 59 yards. And that is going to be a huge... 
huge play and a first down for Pittsburgh. Third down and 15. Roethlisberger takes a snap. One chance at the end zone. He throws it, and that is going to be incomplete, except he was held. Giante Johnson was held, and it looks like that is going to be called defensive pass interference, and it is. It's against the Broncos. That's going to give the Steelers the football at the one-yard line. That one is on Kyle Fuller, the former Chicago Bears defensive back, making to look his presence known, except the presence is for the other team. As right here, Najee Harris looks is probably going to get the ball, and... Watt in motion, and he is going up the middle, diving over the offensive lineman for the touchdown. Najee Harris makes it a 17-6 football game, and see what happens whenever the offensive line plays good. Ben is by no means a great quarterback anymore. Heck, it's debatable of whether or not he's even a good quarterback. But whenever we get good offensive line play, it allows him to throw less because it gets the Najee Harris running game going, and Najee Harris can create something out of nothing. And honestly, even if the offensive line is playing terrible, I'd rather see them just simply run the football more than pass it because A, Ben gets to throw less, B, it opens up the passing playbook when it comes to our offensive style, and C, is Najee can make something out of nothing at this point in his career, and that's something that Ben can't do. Ben has to have something. He's not going to be able to create something out of nothing like he used to when he was in his prime, especially during his rookie year. I mean, he was a big boy, the real big Ben, not the... I don't know why we still bother calling him Big Ben. I mean, think about it. He's lost so much weight. But anyways, yeah, the offensive line, when they play good, it opens up the running game, which makes Ben have to throw less, and it makes him more accurate. It makes him a better quarterback. It opens up our playbook, because let's be real. I don't think we should be going into games scared and playing soft plays like we usually do. We didn't do that today, but usually our play calling is really soft from the start, which is like, are you even trying? Except I get it to a certain extent. Our playbook is modified to fit our terrible offensive line in our aging quarterback but still I mean at the end of the day like you can't be doing that and it just opens up the playbook especially the play action game as that's going to be a first down for Najee Harris taking it to about the 37 yard line the Najee Harris hype train has officially taken off if it hasn't already and he's just going to go on a route Najee Harris breaks the tackle and that one is not going to be good enough for the first down third down and three here for Roethlisberger nice pass and see what happens whenever Ben doesn't throw 45 times a game. That's why I, even if our offense is struggling and even if they know we're going to run, run it. Because Najee can get three yards out of a play where a normal running back might get zero or one sometimes. And Ben Roethlisberger simply can't do that, especially whenever he throws over 50 times. Roethlisberger drops back. He throws. This one's going to be caught. And that one is going to be to Pat Fryermuth, the second round pick out of Penn State. And he is, looks like to be the future spot, the future for the Steelers at the tight end position as this pass was intended for Ray Ray McLeod. And Ben, that was one of his only bad throws this game. He really hasn't had bad throws. And honestly, if there's one thing I can blame the Steelers' offensive woes for other than this game, it'd be the offensive line. Not Ben, not play calling, but the offensive line, because the offensive line affects all of that. Ben doesn't affect the offensive line. The offensive line affects Ben, and it affects Najee as well. And whenever you get Najee really going instead of a modified version of Najee because of a terrible offensive line, which I'd, once again, I'd rather see a modified Najee Harris than Ben throwing the ball 50 times a game, then it's caught. And that's going to be a touchdown to Chase Claypool. What a great throw by Roethlisberger. Great job holding on to it by Claypool. Is that is going to result in another touchdown for Pittsburgh and a 24-6 lead. This is by far the best offensive game the Steelers have had so far this year. And honestly, the best overall game they've had so far this year. But like I was saying, if you can imagine the steel, a modified version of Najee Harris and Ben throwing the ball 50 times a game, imagine what a good offensive line would do for this team. That's exactly what you saw today. If they keep this up, they can really turn this thing around. And let's be realistic, the best that's not good for them is he is sacked. And that one is going to be Henry Mondo, his first sack of the year. And that is going to create a third down and 15 for Denver. But like I was saying, um, you just... If the Steelers, like, the Steelers technically going, like, 3-14 and 14 is the best thing they could do for themselves so they could draft a quarterback next year. But at the same time, you like to see your, your favorite team win. We're not a team of taking. And it looks like Tim Patrick is going to extend, and he looks like he is going to get the first down, but just barely get the first down. But like I said, the Steelers are not a team to rebuild. So, and you love seeing your teams win regardless of whether or not it's the best for them now or to, to win or to lose whether or not it's better for their future. You just want them to win because that's that's the reason why the game is played. The game is played to win. So at the end of the day, if they somehow do go go 10-7 and seven, really do turn around and make the playoffs, not saying it will happen, but it could, then 
you know, at the end of the day, I'll be happy. They're not going to go to the Super Bowl the way it looks, and, you know, it's just going to give them a worst possible scenario when it comes to their draft stock. But at the end of the day, you like to see your team win, and that's the end of the story for me. I don't care. As right here, Portland Sutton, big play for the Broncos, going to get them inside the 12, 13-yard line. And Bridgewater, he jukes him out, and he spins, and he's going to get to about the 2-yard line, sets up for a third down and goal. And the Broncos just really trying to punch it into the end zone for the first time this game. And Bridgewater is going to scramble, and he is going to find nobody. He's just going to throw it away. Great def team defense by the Steelers on that play. And fourth down. Broncos were two for two this drive on fourth down and make that three for three as that is going to be a touchdown for Tommy Hilton, excuse me, Kendall Hilton, who last year had to start a game unexpectedly at quarterback. He was the emergency quarterback against the Saints. I'm sure you all remember that. Yet the Ravens got to wait all the way until Wednesday night football, a game that started at like 545, 6 o'clock, so we could play the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar didn't even play, but you know, who, who cares, right? We're not, we're over that. We're better than that. We're more mature than that. And that's going to be a first, another first down for the Broncos. And, ooh, man, the Steelers should still win this game, but they need to learn how to close things out because this defense has had a great performance today. You need to learn how to close it out because, like, I really don't want to have another heart attack. And as I say that, Cortland Sutton finds himself wide open in the end zone. James Pierre got burnt, and that's going to be a touchdown. So now if they get the two-point conversion, they're only down by three. And the way it looks is they're probably going to stop us on offense because we haven't really done anything this quarter. Imagine that. Two-point conversion attempt. Huge play of the game. Bridgewater keeps the ball, and that is going to be incomplete. So the Broncos need a touchdown in order to win this football game. And they can allow a field goal, but they'd have to get a two-point conversion just to tie the game and try to take it to overtime. And Johnson over the middle. We actually use the middle of the field for once, and look what happens. A pass to Johnson like that and Claypool. A huge play to Claypool. Where was it? Middle of the field. Maybe that's why we should throw it there, Matt Canada. Who would have thought? Not every play, obviously. But you know what I mean. And Claypool's able to shed a tackle, and he's going to stay in bounds. Nice, smart play by Claypool. Third down and five. In field goal range, Najee Harris, and he, oh, that's not Najee, excuse me, that's Betty Snell. He's about a half yard away from the first down. Steelers are going to have to settle for a field goal, but the Broncos have a chance. It is up, and it is automatic because this is Chris Boswell at Heinz Field, and it isn't against the Oakland Raiders, so you better believe it's good to give the Steelers an eight-point lead. And this one's caught over the middle by Tim Patrick, a very, very underrated receiver for the Denver Broncos. They have a great receiving core. It's sad to see K.J. Handler tear his ACL, especially for a Penn State fan. He's out for the year. Wasn't in this game, but it was just a practice. But man, that sucks. As right here, this one's going to be a dump off to Devontae Williams. He's going to get the first down. And the Broncos trying to get some magic and have a huge fourth quarter to come back and win. Trying to have a 21-point fourth quarter and take it to overtime. As this one is caught by Kendall Hilton. And that's only his fourth reception of the year. But he has had two amazing receptions today. And he gets those feet in. Originally, after replay review, originally they said he wasn't in. He was in. And right here, Bridgewater steps up. And that is going to be batted down by Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden, the veteran quarterback. He's starting to slow down a little bit, but that's okay. It's understandable, and he's still a great corner. He's showing us why he deserves to be on this football team today, why we got him from the Cleveland Browns the one year in 2018 was his first year here. As right here, that is going to be incomplete. Great coverage by Terrell Edmonds. Going to set up a fourth down and goal. This is the biggest play of the year for the Steelers. T difference between two and three and one and four potentially. Trying to keep this season alive, really. As this one, it's intercepted. James Pierre makes up for getting burnt against Cortland Sutton earlier. The James Pierre hype train is back. And the Steelers win this football game. 27-19. And they are two and three. And this is what happens whenever you have decent offensive line play. It makes Naj Najee Harris be able to run all over everyone everywhere wherever he wants it opens up the offensive playbook we don't have to play scared football it makes ben look so much better because he has to throw less it opens up the playbook especially the play action game and it makes us look like a quality football team and it keeps our defense off the field for 80 percent you know because usually they're on the field for 80 percent of the game but let's see what another afc how another afc west team is doing and that team would be the oakland raiders that team that beat us in week oh, two here Intercepted! Stepping in, Houston Carson! Okay then, well, it looks like the Raiders are going to lose this game. And, wow, I mean, I know it's they're, they're, not, they're not done because they're 3-2, and two, but they might already be starting their midseason collapse. Let's see what's going on with John Green. The NFL and the Raiders and the fans. 
be sure that there are not any other racial insensitive remarks by you out there in the atmosphere that could be published by the Washington Journal or any other publication. All I can say is I, I'm not a racist. I don't, uh, I can't uh, tell you how sick I am. I apologize again to, to, to D. Smith, um, but I feel good about who I am and what I've done my entire life. And um, I apologize for the insensitive remarks. I had uh, no, uh, you know, I, I, I had no racial uh, intentions with those remarks at all. But um, yes, they can. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not like that at all. But I apologize. I don't want to keep addressing it. My, just my last question: Had the NFL contacted you, and, and uh, what was their response? Uh, what did, what did you say? I have not had any contacts with them yet, but uh, we'll see what happens here in the next few days. I guess that's my question: Do you expect something to happen? You know, I'm not going to answer all these questions today. I think I've addressed it already. Uh, I can't remember a lot of the things that transpired 10 or 12 years ago, but um, I stand here uh, in front of everybody apologizing. I know I'm not, uh, I don't have an ounce of, of racism in me. I'm a, a guy that takes pride in leading people together. And I'll continue to do that for the rest of my life. Breaking news out of Las Vegas, where moments ago, the Las Vegas Raiders and John Gruden officially parted ways.